Don't do this. This is the gates of hell, ladies. Don't murder your babies. Do not condemn your children. Do not condemn any children. Don't condemn anybody. Don't condemn anybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Please come on. Let us help you, ladies. Let us help you. Don't murder your baby. Don't judge your baby to death. Please let us help you. The Lord gave you that child as a blessing, as a gift from his hand, not to be murdered. The Lord did not give you that child to pay a serial killer to rip him or her to pieces. That child is a blessing from his hand. Why would you judge your child to death? Why would you hate your child to death? Please come out and let us help you. Come out and talk to us. Don't hate your child to death. The Lord Jesus Christ did not die on the cross and shed his blood so that you could pay a serial killer to butcher your child to death. I want to be like you. Yeah, we want to be crazy. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and he shed his blood. He didn't die on the cross. And what you must do to be saved, to be reconciled to God, you must repent, you must turn away from all your sins and turn to him for forgiveness, for salvation. The Lord Jesus said to repent and believe in the gospel. For there's no other way, there's no other name under heaven by which man can be saved. The Bible says that no one is good, no not one, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Most people in this culture think that they're good people. Most people think that they can bribe God with their good works. They think that their good will outweigh their bad. But no. The Bible says no one is good. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Today, if you hear His voice, do not harden your hearts. Today, while there's still breath in your body, while your heart is still beating, be reconciled to God through the blood of His Son. Don't trust in yourself. The Bible says... For it is appointed once for man to die, and after that the judgment. This life is all you get. One opportunity to be made right with God. To be reconciled to the God who created you in His own image. Don't forsake that. Don't forsake that. While you still have time, be made right with God. Forsake the murder of your child. Leave this place of death. Stop listening to the lies of the devil. To the, to the lies of Satan. The devil has brought you here this morning. Whoever counseled you here, the devil used them. Whether it was your parents, your pastor, your priest, friends, co-workers, whoever counseled you to be here today, the devil used them to get you here. Forsake the lies of the devil. Because the devil wants to destroy you. And he wants to murder your baby. Listen to the conscience that is within you. You have the law of God within you that tells you right from wrong. That's how you know the difference between good and evil. Your conscience tells you that. And your conscience is telling you that this is evil. The law of God says you shall not murder. The sixth commandment says that you shall not murder. Listen to your conscience that is telling you to leave this place of death now. Right now you're going against the conscience that God put within you. Love your baby as you love yourself, mother, father. This goes against your maternal, this goes against your paternal instincts. The Lord did not create mothers and fathers to murder their children, but to nurture their children, to care for their children, to love their children. So many babies are being massacred in our culture. Thousands of children are scheduled to be murdered in this in this country today. Don't be don't let your one don't let your child be one of those children. Love your baby. Raise, give love your child, give birth to your child and raise your child in a loving, caring, nurturing home. Don't let your child be ripped to pieces by the serial killer in there. The Bible says, for there is a way that seems right to a man, but in the end, it leads to death. <clears throat> this is a way that leads to death. And we're pleading with you to forsake 
the broad road of destruction that leads to eternal hell, separation from God and the lake of fire. Hey, can we please help you? These guys are crazy. <laughs> Says the guy that's escorting a child to be butchered to death. It's not too late to come out, no matter how long you've been in there. It's not too late to love your child, to care for your child, as you would care for your born child, or if you had born children. You would not throw your child, your born child, into Lake Michigan, so why would you pay to have your pre-born child murdered? Come to the cross of Jesus Christ. Be reconciled to God through the blood of His Son. Stop dehumanizing your child. Stop thinking that your child, that the best thing for your child is to have them murdered. No. People think that it's compassionate to have their child killed in the womb. But no. Abortion is the ultimate form of child abuse. What goes on in this place of death, this is the ultimate form of child abuse. It's not loving to murder your child in cold blood. It's very hateful. It's very judgmental. Turn away from that now. If you need help, we're here to help you. There's a place across the street that can give you free help for you and your child. Please come out and talk to us. Let us help you. We can only help you if you accept the help. Please don't spurn the law of God that's written on your heart. Please do not suppress the truth and unrighteousness. This culture is full of people who love their sin and they hate God. And because they love their sin so much, because they hate God so much, they sink to the depths of evil where they murder their child in cold blood. They pay an assassin, they hire an assassin to butcher their child in cold blood. Yes, sir. That woman's going to leave right there. It's, you think that's a better spot? That's fine. We can keep on talking. Uh, uh. This culture has turned motherhood and fatherhood upside down. Where fathers and mothers, they're supposed to give of themselves. They're supposed to sacrifice of themselves their own well-being, even their own life, for the sake of their child. Real fathers and mothers, they give of themselves. They even sacrifice their own lives for the well-being of their child. But this culture says, this culture has turned mothers and fathers into cold-blooded murderers, even mass murderers, where fathers and mothers, instead of caring for their children, instead of sacrificing of themselves for their children, they force their child, they force their children to sacrifice their very lives so that their parents can live for themselves, so their parents can be selfish, so their parents, so that their parents can put more money in the bank so the parents can get a better job, so the parents can have what they want, so the parents can have more materialist, more materialism, more stuff. Turn away from that. Don't make your child pay with his or her life so that you can have more stuff. So much, so much selfishness, so much selfishness that this culture has taught you. This culture, so many thousands of children are murdered every day. Tens of millions of human beings have been slaughtered in our culture in the past 46 years. And the death, the death toll continues every single day. So much rebellion against God and the mass murder of children is the fruit of our rebellion against God. So many years we have turned our back on the law of God. We have forsaken God. So many years we have chosen our selfishness our sexual immorality because we love our sins so much. But I'm telling you, your sins are not worth perishing in the lake of fire and burning in hell for all eternity. It's not worth your sin. This life is so short. Eternity is so long. It is not worth burning in hell for all eternity. Even as wicked people 
try to drown out the truth. We love you enough to speak truth to you. But truth is hate to those who hate the truth. Truth is hate to those who hate the truth. People hate hearing the gospel because they hate the truth. And this culture is full of people who hate God, who hate the gospel. But one day you're going to stand before God and give an account for your life. One day you're going to give an account to God for all the sinfulness that you engaged in in this life. Whether you live to be a hundred years old or you live to die in your twenties, this life is so short, eternity is so long. Turn away from your sins. Turn away from death. It's not true love that you'd murder your baby in cold blood. This is not loving. This is the ultimate form of child abuse. This is the ultimate form of hate that you would hate your child to death. Love your baby, father, mother. If you profess to be a Christian, if you claim to be a Christian, you know this is evil. If you're a Catholic, you know that this is evil. You know that this is rebelling against God. But you still suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Whatever situation you're in, it does not justify murdering your baby in cold blood. Whatever situation you found yourself to be in that's brought you to this place, it does not justify murdering your baby in cold blood. It doesn't justify it. So many people give so many justifications for their sin, for murdering their babies, for their sexual morality. But it's not worth dying and going to hell for. I'm here today to speak truth to you as one who's been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. He's proud of this guy. The Lord Jesus Christ saved me with his shed blood by with his with his death on the cross. And he can save you too. Yeah. He saved you? The Lord Jesus Christ gave me a compassion for the least of these, for my neighbors in and outside the womb, born and pre-born. I know when and where my neighbors are being murdered every day. Right here, that's why I'm here. Because the Lord Jesus Christ said to love your neighbor as yourself. It's the fulfillment of the law. The book of Romans says. The Bible says to deliver those who are being taken away to death. To hold back those who are staggering to the slaughter. So that's what brings me here today as a Christian, as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Loving my neighbor as myself. I know when and where my most vulnerable, my most helpless neighbors are being murdered, are scheduled to be slaughtered. So it is love that God has put within me, the Lord Jesus Christ has put within me that compels me to be here today. When I could be doing so many other things that feel good, that are more pleasurable. But I'm here because I don't want you to become a murderer of your child, of your little boy, of your little girl. And I'm here to tell you that we're here to help you. But you have to accept that help. We can't help you if you choose to go through with the murder of your child. Ouch! No matter how long you've been in here, it's not too late to come out and let us help you. It's not too late to come to the Lord Jesus Christ to be reconciled to God. None of us knows when we're going to stand before God. You may die today. The Lord may require your life of you today. And right now you're showing that you're not ready to stand before Him. But we want you to be ready. I don't want you to stand before God not ready condemned in your sins. But you can't stand before God justified in the blood of Jesus Christ, not your own works, lest no man should boast. If any one of us could work our way to heaven, then the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross and shed His blood in vain for no reason. But He, that was, but he did not die on the cross in vain. He died on the cross because we're not good people. We're all wicked people in need of Jesus Christ. 
And the Lord Jesus Christ saved me. I used to be a wicked, filthy pagan who only cared about myself. The Lord Jesus Christ changed me, gave me a new heart with new desires and new affections. I'm not the same person I used to be. The Lord put within me a compassion for the least of these, for little preborn children that this culture has forsaken. Nobody in our culture has been more forsaken, more abandoned, more hated, more judged than preborn children. So I'm here to speak up for those who have been forsaken by this culture, by the church, by most people. I'm here to be a voice for them. So few people will be a voice for them, but by God's grace and mercy alone, I'm being a voice for them. Please love your child today. Please come out from this place of death. Ma'am, you're judging your child to death. Don't judge that child. You're judging yourself. You judge this child. You condemn yourself. You're judging this child. Do not condemn this child. Ladies, please come out from this place. You tell us not to judge, but you're judging your child to death. You are misquoting scripture. Twist not scripture lest you be like Satan. Don't, don't judge your child to death thinking that you're a good person. Good people do not murder their babies. They don't. Wicked people murder their babies. Wicked people judge their child. They hate their child to death. Whatever reason, whatever justification you have for being here, don't make your child pay with his or her life so that you can continue to live for yourself. Love your child, father, mother. Love your baby. The Lord, the Lord gave you that child as a blessing from His hand, a gift from His hand that you're judging to death right now. The sign out here says, the sign here says that hate has no home here. Actually, that's not true because the greatest form of hatred in the city of Milwaukee is inside this building right now. People are hating their child to death. People think that it's so loving to have their child killed because their child won't be, won't be suffering when they're born. But no, it's not loving to murder your child and call blood in the womb. You wouldn't say that of your born child People don't say that it's loving to murder their child in cold blood after they're born. They just make that excuse, that justification for their child in the womb. Because they dehumanize their child, saying that not, they're not a human being yet. But you know it's a child in the womb. It's common sense. It's, it's logic. Basic human biology. Right here. Ma'am, please don't love your... You can, please don't touch Mr. Kildner. Please don't murder your child, ma'am. Please don't do this to your child. Please love your baby as you love yourself, ma'am. Ma'am, please love your baby as you love yourself. Don't do this. Ma'am, please love your child. Ma'am, ma'am, don't hate children to death. Don't judge them to death. 